Jilhan had quit off his job and moved to the Cayman's Islands to dive full-time honing skills in underwater photography. This is where it all started. She became a professional cave diving explorer and underwater filmmaker. She has made TV series, written books, and even consulted on movies for directing including James Cameron. Basically, she is an expert in more than one field. But her main passion is to discover underwater environments that no human has ever laid their eyes on. Many years into the future, as a cave diver, she achieved a lot. And therefore, to this day she is considered one of the most accomplished cave divers on the planet. Among all her accomplishments, there was this one remarkable adventure that became well known and talked about worldwide. It was her expedition to the B-15 iceberg in Antarctica. You see, exploring an underwater cave is already life-threatening. But imagine a cave inside an iceberg that has constantly changing and hazardous weather. That is what she along with her team went on to explore. It is an incredible story but any human's worst nightmare. This is the first ever dive inside an iceberg, the cave that tried to keep us. Back in 2001, accompanied by the expert diver Paul Herneth, Jill captained an expedition to the B-15 iceberg in Antarctica. To most people, caves mean darkness, terror, fear and claustrophobia. But to Jill, it is a sense of curiosity. She likes exploring the vast unknown darkness beneath the ground. She and her husband Paul always wanted to carry out a project on untouched environments of the ice-covered continent Antarctica. For a while, they had been monitoring this great crack slowly opening up in the Ross Ice Shelf. Around the time they had planned to go on their expedition to Antarctica, something incredible happened. Perfect timing. The largest moving object on our planet broke away from Antarctica. A gigantic iceberg the size of Jamaica. By National Geographic, Jill and Paul were given the most valuable piece of information about this iceberg. There may be caves inside this iceberg. Jill was like, hell yeah, there are caves inside the iceberg. However, there was no concrete proof. It was merely a hypothesis. They figured that if this great crack had broken this piece of the ice sheet, then there had to be other cracks. So with that, they made the decision. Go to Antarctica and be the first explorers to ever cave dive inside an iceberg. A goal that no one else but Jill and her team had. So after extensive planning, Jill along with Paul, Wes and the rest of the team traveled to Antarctica. The moment Jill saw that wide pinnacle of ice for the first time standing like a mountain on the ice, her heart started racing. It was a sight out of this world, so beautiful and sculptural. In that moment, she had a feeling of reverence. All that ice was endangered and she had the sense that she was looking at something that would never ever be the same again. And so she felt extremely privileged. After examining the iceberg, they found caves just like they expected, but they couldn't tell how deep and complex they could be. They just knew that they are but really to learn more about them, they had to enter inside and explore. So they started planning a dive. They picked this beautiful iceberg that they called Patience Camp. The main giant iceberg had parts of it broken into separate smaller icebergs and this one was one of them. As this was going to be the first dive of the project, Jill felt a bit nervous. It was not really for herself but for Wes and Paul. Because it was their first ever ice dive, it was going to be the coldest dive either of them had ever been on. They pulled their zodiac board into this little bay and Wes rolled off the board and the water started pouring into his suit. He was not quick enough, he should have gotten out of the water immediately. To check out his new camera, he decided he wanted to shoot at least one minute of footage. That was way too long in that bone chilling water. He quickly lost his ability to even move his body. He was basically wearing a bag full of cold water. They immediately got him on the boat, he was rushed back to the brave heart, they stripped him down and got him into a bunk with sleeping bags to warm up as his physical state was at a serious risk. This just showed Jill and Paul how unpredictable this adventure was going to be. 
They were all highly experienced cave explorers and also very well aware of all the issues that could happen to them and their gear because of the ultra cold water. Yet what they didn't understand really was the environment they were going to put themselves into in these iceberg caves. After this predicament with Wes, he actually recovered fast and in no time bounced back. However, for the first dive, they decided to let him and the first mate stay on the boat while Paul and Jill nervously rolled into slushy chunky water. So the dive into the unknown began. So when their feet first touched the water, they got this electric shark like sensation from head to toe. As the water hits their faces, they also got an immediate bang like an ice cream headache. They took several quick deep breaths in order to knock back the cold. Once they dropped their faces in the water, the first thing they saw was this mixing slurry of slush and melting fresh water mixed with the salt water. They all of a sudden found themselves not being able to focus at all. Though despite all that, through little chunks of ice, they slowly and carefully descended down, dropping into this completely unknown territory to any human. Along the way, they came across this deep vertical fissure crack. Jill and Paul made their way into that crevasse. They went down and down and down into the dark abyss. They suddenly came upon the seafloor which was about 130 feet deep. There at the bottom, they discovered something, something wonderful. It was a passage into more unknown darkness. This is the point where Jill realized it. They discovered this environment that nobody had ever seen before. The ice around them was blue and white and clear. Sometimes like a robin's egg, sometimes like a deep turquoise. The seafloor was red and orange and yellow, every warm color, and the contrast was stunning. But all over it was a shack carpet of filter feeding organisms. There were sponges and little Christmas tree like shaped worms, and things that looked like miniature palm trees sort of wafting in the current. Not only that, there were these isopods, they were kind of like something between a spider and a lobster, about the same size of a hand. The worst part was them raining down from cracks over Jill's head and crawling along the floor and hitting her camera and landing on her shoulder. You would only see that in a horror movie. The seafloor had its own unique sounds, some were actually pretty creepy to hear. There was a constant clicking sound. As they swam deeper and deeper into the iceberg, there were also strange cracks and pops and groans from the ice. It was moving, it was shifting and it was changing. Some time passed and Jill and Paul heard this deep groaning noise with a strong vibration. Jill felt it all the way through her toes. It was that loud. She and Paul kind of looked at each other with a disturbed expression on their faces. They looked at their gear and they were all fine. They looked around trying to see if anything looks different and their instinct sensed danger. So they after a few minutes turned around on the dive and slowly made their way back to the entrance. Once they got to the entrance, there were huge, by huge I mean giant pieces of ice where they had entered the cave. The doorway they swam into was gone, fully covered with ice. As this dive was something they had never done before, they couldn't predict everything that would go wrong. Jill and Paul were flabbergasted, seeing this horrifying sight. Imagine entering a cave through its only doorway, only to find that after exploring inside and coming back to the doorway and seeing that it has gone. It is no longer open. It's closed and you have no way out. At this point, every breath was so valuable as both Jill and Paul had only so much of air left in their tanks. This is the end of the dive, so it's only obvious that they are low on gas. Every breath marches them either ever closer to success or ever closer to death. They searched around to find a way around. A few terrifying minutes went by, through the giant blocks of ice, they finally and miraculously found a way out. But the problem now was that they also had to wait for a while to make a decompression stop. In the midst of trying to find a way out, they almost forgot that they have to decompress. So the two had to hang in the water 20 to 30 feet below the surface until they could rise back to the ground. Luckily, they had enough air for all that. When Jill looked up at this new cave exit they found, 
she saw Wes and Matt with wide smiles on their faces. Apparently they had seen how the iceberg had caved and that big chunk of ice sloughed off and closed the doorway while sending this great wave almost capsizing them in the zodiac. They told Jill and Paul how terrifying it was for them to see all that knowing full well that anyone in the cave isn't coming out. They had been waiting this whole time not knowing whether Jill and Paul were even alive. They knew that there was no way to mount a rescue and all they could do was just wait. But eventually, things didn't really turn out that bad. By the next day, Jill thought, okay, now I know more about the cave than I did yesterday. We are gonna give it another try. She just didn't realize yet that if anything now, she should be more certain of how risky a dive inside that cave is. She now has more reason to not explore the cave again. But in that moment, she thought it was a risk worth taking. So, the second dive into the unknown began. This time, the entrance looked more calm and stable. By the looks of it, everything seemed fine. So Jill and Paul, similar to the first time, directly dropped down to the bottom now that they knew the route to the sea floor. They started photographing some of the life and simply everything around them. Several minutes into more exploring, Jill noticed or rather felt something. The current was picking up. It was gradually getting stronger by the minute. A few more minutes passed, it all of a sudden started racing rapidly. Jill instinctively dug her hands into the seafloor to hold onto something and stop herself from rushing forward with the current. Paul was doing the same. Both had to go against the current to move forward to the exit. They couldn't kick hard enough to move forward. The current completely had them. Jill and Paul looked at each other and knew there was no escaping. They are being sucked inside the iceberg. They didn't know how, but for some luck they had, they saw a blue light in the distance. It is probably another exit, they thought. In a split second, both didn't even have to communicate, they just knew what they had to do and went with the flow of the current and moved towards this other doorway. Now, the scary part about this impulsive decision they made is that inside an iceberg, you don't have a sense of how far something you see in the distance would be from you. So Jill and Paul were taking a huge risk. The two kept drifting and drifting for a long while. They realized this blue light was not as close as they thought. The more they drifted, the bigger the light should get if they were getting any closer to it. But that was not happening for a few minutes. However, they really lucked out. They finally felt themselves getting closer to it. So ultimately, they got to it. In Jill's head, she was like, okay, we are finally out. Well, not yet. When they reached the surface, Jill broke the ice with her head. But what she found was more ice more ice all around her and it was higher than she could see over horror struck jill looked around with frightened eyes time gets so compressed and takes on a strange nature when you are scared when you know there's a possibility that you might die everything gets so out of control and all you will feel is despair about 15 to 30 minutes passed jill and paul were shaking from the cold it was excruciating, but suddenly they heard something. You see, what Jill and Paul didn't know was that back on the surface, the current had knocked the boat off its anchorage just as it had flushed them through the iceberg, and they were pulling up the anchor to reset it. In the process of that chain being yanked up onto the boat, the boat moved and Jill saw a glimpse of the stern swing around the edge of the vertical side of the iceberg. That's when she heard, oh there they are. She heard in the distance, Wes's voice. Jill thought it was the sweetest sound she had ever heard. Is that Jill? Wes asked loudly. He spotted Jill and Paul on the horizon and then was slowly able to move the Braveheart towards them and then get them out of the water. This is where they should have just ended this whole exploration. But no, they wanted to try one last time. So the third dive into the unknown began. So, as this was their final dive inside the ice island, Wes also decided to join. The images inside the cave Jill brought were so amazing and compelling that he wanted to shoot himself with the best camera they had. 
So the trio jumped in and like the previous times, descended down to the seabed and moved their way into the cave passage. So after exploring and photographing for long enough, Jill turned to Wes and Paul and put her thumb in the signal that it is about time to ascend and surface. This is when the current also started picking up again. As the trio turned around to quickly ascend, they realized that unlike the previous dives, this time they felt that they might not be able to get out. The current was so strong at this point. They pulled and pulled and dived their hands into the seafloor, yet they couldn't even swim an inch forward. Just biceps, triceps and forearms were shaking, pulling with every bit of energy she had to get back towards that crevasse. This time the current wasn't going to let go of them that easy. Paul and Wes were behind Jill and Wes was losing ground. He yelled out, help me with the camera. Jill was like, screw it, we could literally die here. She got angry. Meanwhile, Paul attempted to help Wes. Jill got mad at Paul as well. She was like, come on guys, you can't do this. Well, with each other's help, Paul and Wes managed and worked the camera towards the entrance. Yeah, against the current, they were finally able to slowly make their way out of the cave passage located at the seabed. Although they eventually got there, they were still not out of the woods. The surface was still 130 feet over their heads and they had to make an ascent. But they couldn't get up the crevasse as the water was pouring down it fast. The force of the water was so strong it pressed them down back every time they tried to move up. Jill looked around, trying to figure something out. For such a deadly close to death situation, the trio stayed superhumanly calm. Jill thought, what are we going to do? The only option was to climb the walls up to the exit, but it was all ice and therefore slippery. Jill touched the wall and it just slid down. However, out of sheer luck, Jill remembered something. The little ice fish that they had been studying that were about the size of a thumb. These creatures lived in these burrows inside the ice, so Jill thought climbing holes. She could jam a finger into those holes and maybe she could have enough grip that she could pull her way up and get back towards the surface that was still over 100 feet. As they had no other choice, Jill first inched her way up hole by hole. Wes and Paul also followed along. It was just pure survival instincts at this point. They were giving every bit of energy they had to climb up these walls. So despite so many odds, they eventually made it. They finally got up out of the crevasse and out of the stream of current. When they all got back to the boat after that nightmare of a dive, Jill was feeling quite solemn. There, the science officer reached down. They were already two hours overdue, so he was relieved to see them. Jill looked up and said, the cave tried to keep us today. Mother Nature had given us a last warning. But still, after all those terrors, almost dying three times already, it's amazing how these guys never felt enough. They wanted more. So they decided they wanted to do one more dive. Thus, with that in mind, they prepped their equipment. They went to have a meal, so they sat down and started planning their last dive. A dive that they would do at that moment when the current slackened. This time they really said, okay this is definitely the last dive, no more. So as they were talking, having a meal, they heard screams on the deck. The team dropped everything and ran up the companion way up onto the deck. And there was the iceberg, the cave that they had just been inside of breaking into pieces, heaving up in the sea and sending these giant waves toward their boat. The whole square miles of ice they had just been inside of was breaking apart and dissolving into the sea. Jill just stood there, dumbfounded on the ship's rail. She realized if they had been in the water, they wouldn't be alive right now. So with that, they had to end their expedition, because there were no caves or icebergs anymore. When this whole project was over, Jill, Paul, Wes and everyone on the team tried telling this story to people and everybody was like you guys are insane, how could you go in over and over and over again and boy you were lucky you are an idiot. Nevertheless, for Jill it was worth it, 
having that experience to document an environment that maybe most likely no one will ever see again. Later, Jill highlighted that they don't know whether the B-15 iceberg was truly a sign of climate change or whether it was just a part of the evolving changes in the Antarctic ice sheet. She said, it's actually impossible to know. However, what she knew was the importance of exploring these environments and documenting all the living inside. She said, I'm glad to have that experience and glad to even have had those brushes with death. That made me a better and safer diver in the future. Alright guys, with that we have got to the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed and even learned something from this whole incredible ordeal. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. And alright guys, that's all for today and with another story, I will see you guys soon. Until then, stay safe out there and goodbye.